Hey guys, before I uh, start this video proper, I just want to say that with uh, my videos now, what I'm going to try and do is when I can, um, not all the time, but I'm going to try and just leave a link in the bottom. So if I do use some music at the end of the video that I've created, you know, myself, or, you know, sometimes I do sort of kind of covers of other, of other music on the piano. And um, what I'll try and do is I'll just leave a link in the bottom in my description. Um, and if you want some, you know, if you want some music or if you're struggling for some music for your video, feel free to pick that up and, um, you know, put it to your images if you want. So yeah, options there if you want to do it. Um, so just wanted to let everybody know that um, before we get stuck into talking about this um, second session out with the 150 PDS. All right. Do 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 do. Ba -da -ba -bum -ba. G'day everyone, welcome back to my channel. So second time out for the Skywatcher 150 um, PDS. I say second time out, I mean, like most astrophotographers, the, this second image that I did, which was of the, um, what do they call it? The Amiga Nebula or the Swan Nebula. I think it's got about five names, that Nebula. Um, so this, it took me about three days to get all the images I needed. Um, but I did address a few issues because I got a few more parts that I needed. So I just wanted to show you what changes I've made on this scope. So one of the issues I was struggling with was balance. Um, because of the way the camera fits here at the front and it also has on the, the opposite side, it's got a little foot for your guide scope. So this was mounted to the side. It just meant that I found balancing, it was a bit awkward on my mount. I could get it one way, but then the other way it would be out of balance. So the obvious thing was to just basically um, get a dovetail bar here. Um, this is a Vixen bar basically upside down that I had spare anyway. And all I've done is I've turned it upside down and I bought another one of these SV Boney dovetail clamps. Um, and then the, um, the guide scope here, which is the normal guide scope I always use, fits quite nicely on top. And because I have my camera, as you can see here, I got my camera with the flattener attached, which obviously goes here at the front. Um, that basically means that you've kind of got these two balancing each other out a bit and they're also both in a straight line. So it just means balancing your scope um, on your mount becomes a lot easier. Um, the fan here mounted at the back, that's been going fine. Um, I think I mentioned in my last video, this is just a computer fan and basically it's just a USB computer fan and I just use a battery pack on it overnight. I've put one of these little 3M clips so it just clips onto the side here and I can take it off when I need to. Um, they're just the picture hanging clips basically that's all they are. Um, I tend to find a 5000 milliamps not quite enough so I will often just put a if it's going to go the whole night and I'm going to leave my rig out and stick a 10,000 on there because that will keep the fan going like no problem the whole night because um, you don't want your secondary mirror um, fogging up. So yeah the, the purpose of this fan back here which is just mounted on a little bit of this. You can use plastic, I've used core flute. Um, it's just basically to blow some air through and keep the secondary mirror up here from fogging up from dew. That's all working fine, no issues with that. Um, and here we've got the big plate that I ordered. So this is a Losmandy plate. And given the size of the scope, it just felt a little bit flimsy on a little Vixen plate. Maybe that's in my imagination, I don't know, but um, it actually feels a lot more secure on one of these big Losmandy plates. Um, so, so I've attached this plate here to the bottom. Um, the next thing I did with, my f with the, uh, the focuser here, so the way that the focuser was oriented basically meant that the um, ZWO autofocuser came past the end of the scope just. And that meant that when I'm taking my flat frames, so putting a light panel on the end, it was always on an angle. So it's just easier to flip the focus around and have the ZWO um, autofocus it this way. And yeah, that all works um, perfectly fine. And yeah, having the guide scope up here seems to be helping with my guiding um, and, and balancing. I found generally, this is on a HEQ5 Pro mount. So I think the scope weight for this is about six kilos, five or six kilos. All up, I wouldn't be surprised. I haven't actually weighed it, but it's probably six and a half, I don't know, maybe seven kilos, something like that. And um, I found that 
with the guiding moving up from my little refractor down here, which was about three and a half kilos, I used to get guiding probably relatively consistently about anywhere from 0.5 to 0.8. I, I reckon with this setup now, my guiding's more like 0.7 to 1. So you can definitely tell that there's been a little bit of an impact on guiding. But given the fact that I'm using a HEQ5 Pro mount, and I think this is kind of at the upper end of the amount of weight that I want to put on it, I'm not too bothered about that. Um, what seems to be making the biggest difference actually in terms of the quality of my stars is not so much guiding, it's the effect of wind on this. So if you get anything more than a sort of breeze on this scope, I tend to find that it will sort of kill your subs. You'll get the elongated stars. So what I'm tending to find is I will only take this out on nights when, um, yeah, I've got a very light breeze because otherwise you, you do end up just sort of getting rid of a bunch of your subs. As you can see, there's a lot of surface area there. And it's also one of the reasons I don't have a dew shield on it as well, because that's just more surface area to, um, you know, affect, affect the scope with the wind. Um, it's a different ball game if you've got an observatory, of course, and you're blocking that wind from hitting your scope. But for me, with it in the back, um, the back garden, yeah, in the middle of my lawn, it's always gonna get affected by the breeze. Um, one other thing to mention, I will just mention, is collimation. So I have found that the collimation on this scope um, seems to, at least for me anyway, it seems to go out each time I use it. Now I have, I have been making a few additions, so I've been moving the scope around, so it'll be interesting to see now, I've kind of got my setup stable, how much it goes out of collimation. I've been using one of these Saxon laser collimators, um, fairly standard collimator, and um, I guess one thing that I need to think about is, what I've noticed is as you tighten this up in the compression ring here, especially the one you get with it, the compression ring that you get with it, which is not a, it's actually not a compression ring, it's just two little screws that um, hit against this. And I found that obviously with those two screws, it can push this very slightly. So I'm a bit doubtful about <laughs> when I'm collimating with this, if I'm doing it right. So I do have a proper compression ring on order, which I should have soon. So I'm hoping that should help with me feeling a bit more confident about where that red dot is actually going and that this is aligned you know, centrally. Um, but yeah, I have had to check and change my collimation each time I've been out with it so far. Um, so I'm still playing with that. And um, if you guys have got any tips on what you do in particular with collimation on these guys, I'd love to know. So leave a comment below. Um, I have heard people using a defocus star, which is, um, sounds like a good idea. So I've not tried that. Um, that's something I'll probably try in the future. And that's pretty much it. So. That's stage two with the scope. I'm pretty happy with a stable setup now. So um, I'll continue testing it and um, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. It's nice to have this extra, extra focal length that I've got. And it's also nice when your phone goes off at the end of the video. So yeah, thanks for joining me guys. And um, if you've not subscribed and if you do like my content, I'd appreciate it if you um, consider subscribing. And um, yeah, I'll catch you next time. So thanks very much.